So in order to produce the best quality video, you need to make it very smooth so you can do cinematic shots and handheld. You know, you can try your best and obviously you can turn on um, image stabilization which is built in. So power optimize image stabilization or whatever it is on the brand of camera you're using. But what I've come across now is that none of that seems to work and even when you slow it down you still get fairly average quality of movement. So I've gone for the Xeon Crane and it's the type that will hold a mirrorless so any of the Sony Alpha range or anything like a Canon uh, 5D or whatever or uh, this is the Lumix so it's um, the FZ100. Um, and I'm also shooting on my brand new camera, which is the Canon EOS 80D. Um, and this balances out all them perfectly fine. Get to store all your things in there so you can carry it around. Nice sturdy box and that comes with it as standard. That's not a sort of an extra cost or anything like that. So let's get started with setup. So you get your camera. It comes with some thumb screws in there. Put your thumb screw through the plate. Oop. Uh, get your camera there and basically just attach your camera. Start off with that bit easily enough. You've got an option to move it side to side on the plate um, to get the balance left to right. So that's all right now side to side. But I'm still not level on that plate. So let's come a tiny amount. It literally is just a tiny, tiny amount. So there you go. So that's pretty much done it now. So as you can see on its own, it's sat there and it's level. There's no issues going on with it. Now the second thing I want to point out is this arm, this handheld arm, is a separate thing I purchased and this remote controller is another separate thing I purchased. So if you were just to hold it on the actual gimbal itself, it would just be this arm here. However, I have to say um, you need to be very strong and stable. Um, it weighs a lot. If you're holding it upright it's not too bad but if you want to go in for some of those cool shots and move it around a bit and then you will find it's very heavy. So if you're used to using something like a DJI Osmo or the DJI Osmo mobile with a mobile phone on it, then this is like 20 times as heavy as that when it's on your arm. So that's why this is a great device to hold the handles and it really does smooth out. So as you can see now, we've balanced the camera. Um, I'm now going to show you some shots of what I've actually been filming. So you can see, um, I'm going to use it just on the gimbal on its own. So you can see just holding the gimbal, um, I'm doing okay with it, everything seems to be, you know, sort of going where I want it to go, it's easy to move the camera up and down, etc. However, now and again, um, my arm is twitching a little bit, so uh, what you're looking at now is probably some footage that is going to be looking rather kind of iffy, certainly not what you would expect in a movie grade kind of very stable shot. Um, so that's why the secondary grip comes in useful because this grip obviously mounts around the first one um, it's made by Xeon as well so you know it's the same kind of fitment everything's going to be fit perfectly and it allows you to use both arms um, and you can still get all the direction movement that you wanted originally but with both arms you get a lot more stable um, grip of the camera um, and the gimbal so all your movements are more stable more secure and it just felt a whole heap easier. Um, not to say that it was still easy, you know, I am learning this, it's the very, very first time I've used this and you got to be there to witness it, so, you know, bear with me on that one. Um, but it just felt that using the actual sort of the dual grip was just so much easier and actually worked um, in producing better shots I find that I could go left to right better and up and down and things like that and the, the running in close shots coming up that all seemed to work a lot better as well. So the third thing I want to point out as well is this little jobby here uh, which is the Bluetooth remote for it um, and that just allows you on this camera because it's not actually paired up in any way shape or form. This is my old camera and this um, the Canon can't do it either. It's only Sony cameras with a special cable you get an adapter that you can use these extra functions like take a picture start recording um, and also zoom in and zoom out. 
So really this Bluetooth thing for me, the Bluetooth controller for me, it's just easy to access so that I've got um, some tilt on the camera. So you can't actually pan left to right, you do that yourself. Um, and you could argue you know, that you can tilt down and up yourself, but the gimbal stabilizes that and tries to keep itself absolutely level. So by using the uh, thumb option there, you can then sort of tilt down, tilt up, as well as moving side to side. And if you have got the Sony and you buy the kit and the cable and everything else, you can zoom in and zoom out and start and stop recording and things like that as well. So you have a little mode button on the uh, actual gimbal itself and it's replicated across to the Bluetooth controller if you get that. Uh, and that cycles through the different modes. So by default when you switch it on, it's um, a pan follow. Press the mode button once and that's locking mode. And after locking mode, you've got following mode, which basically means as you move the camera around, you're controlling everything. So if you actually twist left, the camera will move left. If you twist right, it'll move right. If you then bring the gimbal up, the camera will look down, the gimbal back, uh, then the camera will look up. So it literally kind of almost follows your actions. Um, as soon as you touch uh, the joystick again, uh, that'll take over and it'll return back to the default mode, uh, which is the pan following mode. Press and hold the power button, then the light starts to flash blue and that's it set now. Um, and then we can switch on the joystick um, Bluetooth controller. And then we can control how that moves. And it is very quiet, so all those people that are used to like Osmos and that, that are a bit noisy, then um, this is essentially whisper quiet. No noise from these motors whatsoever. Now as I said, using it this way does allow a great deal of control, like that. And when you use it this way, it just becomes a little bit more cumbersome and a little bit heavier. And I can see as I'm using it that my arm's giving way and you can get those movements. So for people that aren't really familiar with gimbals and how they work and everything else, basically these three motors stabilize the movement of the camera. So this one is left and right pan, uh, this one is your tilt control, and this one is basically keeping it level. So it's it's got a sort of fake horizon in its mind, and it's keeping it level. And those are the axes that this controls. So I totally recommend this dual grip. Uh, the Bluetooth controller, that's entirely up to you if you want to go for that. But I totally recommend this, this uh, dual grip. It's absolutely fantastic, and really does give you extra grip. So let me just show you the Bluetooth controller, just so you can see that. Um, and then the last thing is obviously to point out that yes it does have a mount at the bottom there which does allow you to fit a little tripod um, if you wanted to I've just got a little uh, base there from my um, DJI Osmo Mobile actually which fits quite well it means that I can just rest it down wherever I am and then that will keep itself all suspended and you won't sort of damage your camera or anything like that so the last thing I want to comment about is this remote control it's about £30 and when you pair it up um, you really need to be cautious about other Bluetooth things going on. It's a Bluetooth controller. What I had to do was turn off Bluetooth on my phone and my watch and anything else that was close by before this would pair up. So, the pairing process, very easy. You press and hold the mold button whilst you're pressing the power on button. The blue light flashes, the orange light flashes. The orange light goes out and the blue light stays solid, it's paired. If the blue light continues to flash, you have Bluetooth interference that means that this can't see that. Once you've paired it, you can turn your Bluetooth watch and phone and everything back on and it'll work fine after that. It is just the initial pairing process. It's USB charging, uh, the batteries and this took about an hour to charge and they claim that it'll give you around about uh, 12 hours of use. So there's two batteries it comes with it, it comes with its own charger uh, they took around about two hours to charge and they say in the manual, says in the book, uh, they give you around about four hours of actual use, so that's quite good as well. So thanks very much for watching my ZM Crane demonstration video. Take care, hit the thumbs up, catch you on the next one. Bye.